Hi, everyone. I'm Ivan Bayuki, and welcome back to Wall Street Silver. Joining us today is Mark Yaxley. He is the Managing Director at Strategic Wealth Preservation. Mark, welcome back. Ivan, always a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, it's a pleasure having you on. Uh, Mark, what's your thoughts on the JP Morgan spoofer? He just uh, They just came out and pleaded guilty to spoofing precious metals prices. He basically admitted it was an open strategy uh, on the desk. How, how crazy is that? <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, that's a, a culture that's well entrenched uh, within the banking community. We've seen spoofing of different types of markets for a long time. Uh, others have been found guilty prior. So I'm not surprised. It's unfortunate. You know, the real question here is how much did it actually affect the retail market? In this case, it was, it was probably a pretty minimal effect. But uh, it's good to see the bad guys getting caught. And hopefully, some of the larger associations within our industry uh, will we'll do more than slap JP Morgan on the wrist for this. Because as you know, they're very well entrenched with the LBMA and some of the other associations. So uh, obviously, uh, it's going to be hard to, to fully uh, prosecute JP Morgan for, for this behavior, but uh, I'd like to see it done. Do you think it'll just be like before where they just did a $800 or $20 million fine or $900 million fine, and then that will be the same case? Well, J.P. Morgan, yeah, agreed to pay a $920 million fine to the Department of Justice back in 2020. So they obviously, um, you know, are pretty comfortable with admitting their fault in this case. <laughs> I expect it'll be more along the lines of, of fines. Right. Uh, and, you know, hopefully the, the people involved, the traders that are involved and their direct reports, because if you read the uh, transcripts, they basically admit that they were encouraged or taught how to do this by those in positions higher above them. Yeah. Hopefully these people actually do a little bit of jail time. I think that would send a strong message. Uh, to others that are trying to manipulate our market. Yeah, exactly. Well, silver uh, has had a little bit of tough time this past year. We were hoping to get it to $30 per ounce uh, already. What's your short-term price prediction, uh, let's say now to the beginning of 2023? Right. So I, I'm still, you know, uh, bullish on, on precious metals in general. I think in, in long term, all the fundamentals are still there. It, you know, the war is, is raging on in Europe. You've got a lot of volatility and uncertainty in the markets. You have the inflation card that really hasn't played out yet in terms of uh, precious metals. So I'm, I'm optimistic. Um, it's always hard to say, you know, uh, a year out where things are going to be. But I certainly think uh, the likelihood of the price of silver and gold uh, being higher is much, much more likely than the price being lower than where we are today. We've seen a tremendous amount of pressure on both gold and silver from the U.S. dollar. That That's really the, the, the thing that is driving or keeping these prices low. So right. people come up with all kinds of different reasons as to why gold and silver are performing. When I looked at the data preparing for some interviews this week, it's really clear that it's the U.S. dollar. And, and this one number really jumped out at me. Now, it is about gold, but it, it applies to silver as well. In Q2, uh, the U.S. dollar index was up 6.5%. In Q2, the price of gold was down 6.4%. So the right. correlation between the USD and gold is basically one-to-one. -one, and then silver is an extension of gold's performance generally. And uh, so I expect that gold and silver are going to start creeping back up as the U.S. dollar kind of stabilizes or starts trending back down a little bit, which we've already started to see in the last couple of days. Do you think? Uh in order for the USD to actually start going down drastically, we would need the Fed to pivot. What's your opinion on that? Or even pause uh, their interest rate hikes? I, I don't think that they can at this point. I think it's, really? uh, it, I don't think that they have an option. I mean, inflation is such a huge uh, driver from a political standpoint because it affects everyone. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on the Fed to, to get that, that in, uh, the inflation rate under control. Now, they've said multiple times their target is 2%. Right. Right now, they're at 9.1%. And real inflation, I've seen numbers anywhere anyway, from 12 to 17%. So right. they have a long way to go. And interest rate hikes are one of the tools that they're using aggressively to get there. And then, you know, there's even been chat, chatter on the street of a full percent raise, which is probably more than they want to do, but it's, it's probably what they should be doing. So... It, it's, I don't see them pivoting or, or really stepping away from the current trajectory. Uh, therefore, the U.S. dollar is probably going to stay somewhere around where it is. Now, it's really important to keep watching the euro, though, uh, because that's obviously a weak euro is, is good for the dollar as well. In your view, what currently has the lowest premiums for sovereign mint rounds? What would you recommend? Yeah, I, I told you before we started today, I looked at the wholesale cost of Silver Eagles right now. Yeah, they're crazy. It's $12 uh, <laughs> wholesale. So that means the retail investor is paying like $15. So you're talking like a 70% premium, which is 
you know, my professional experience, I don't even know if I've ever seen it. And I certainly wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Um, on do you the- think that, sorry to cut you off, do you think that reflects the real true price of silver right now, forgetting about spot prices? I think it reflects the real true demand for silver right there now. And I can definitely comment on that. We always expect the silver months, uh, sorry, the summer months to be a little bit slower from a precious metals dealer's perspective. We kind of budget accordingly. We set our targets accordingly. Sales in June and July thus far have exceeded expectations, not only for ourselves, but for a lot of dealers within the industry. So there, there's a lot of physical demand there, but the premiums are always the best indicator of that. We saw a rise in premiums again just this right. week from wholesalers and from producers, which means they're selling a lot of physical product. The only time they're going to lower their premiums or, or they're going to become much more competitive than they are now is if they're not selling any metal and they need to incentivize investors to buy. So that's certainly not the case right now. So I think it is a really great indicator for any holders of physical metal that we're very close to the floor because that, that support, that demand is there. And in terms of strategy, if, if you think we are close to the floor for silver and for gold, you're going to want to start cost averaging in right now. You might not pick the bottom, but if you set up a couple of purchases over the coming months, you're probably averaging at a very good price long term. Like we talked about 2023, you'll be you'll be pretty happy that you got in now. <laughs> so we um, we talked a little bit about hopefully prices and the sentiment of precious metals going up higher. Uh, do you think it's possible, though? for silver to go even lower than it is right now. I think it's hovering around 18. I mean, it's always possible. 18, 19. <laughs> yeah, it's always possible. And it's really hard to say, Ivan, what's going to happen kind of day to day within the market. I think a lot of people, even in, within the industry, are kind of left scratching their heads on the intraday performance of gold and silver. Right. Uh, you know, the whole the whole market is, is kind of uh, in doubt about what's going to happen. But there's a lot of indicators that would tell us that we're close to the floor. A couple of things that come to mind is one, when you look at the highs reached in the summer of 2020, we've come down from that, you know, in, in silver's case, probably between 25, 30% right. from those highs. Gold's come down 15%. So you're no longer buying at the peak market. You're now, you know, really buying a dip if, if, you're, if you're buying um, in now. Another thing that, that struck me this week when I was doing some research is the average cost to produce an ounce of gold right now, there's a range of worldwide. You have those who can produce an ounce of gold very, very cheaply and those who can produce it on the more expensive end. That end, that expensive end right now, they're basically producing either at the spot price or slightly above the spot price. That's wow. an unsustainable business model. So there's a group, about 10% of uh, global producers right now that are at spot or above. So that's not sustainable. And usually what that tells us is, is that we're very near the floor on the, uh, when it comes to the gold price, because those guys are not going to continue to produce gold at a loss. They're going to close their minds, which will affect the supply side of the, the industry. So that's another indicator that I think we're very close to the floor. And yeah, you back to the U.S. dollar. If the U.S. dollar, if you think the U.S. dollar is either going to remain steady or start heading a little bit south, it's going to weaken a little bit, coming off a 20-year high. Remember that, a 20-year high, that's right. a long time for the USD. Then you're going to see, see gold and silver start appreciating again. So we uh, looking over at uh, Europe, they're basically in uh, panic mode. And you see Uniper, they're the biggest uh, German energy firm. And they're dipping into uh, their reserves for energy because demand just keeps going up. Do you think that Uniper or one of these huge energy firms in Europe going down will be that next Lehman brother, like that trigger moment? I mean, that 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 could be one effect of what's happening in Europe, and it, it would obviously have major consequences. I was reading yesterday that the EU is now asking all EU member nations to ration uh, energy reserves by right. 15% coming you know, into the fall and into the winter months, which in and of itself is a huge amount of rationing. Um, you know, can they pull this off you know, or will we see some of these companies fall? I don't know because I don't follow the sector close enough, but it's certainly a huge concern if you're European. I mean, I have family in Germany and, and I can tell you that this is something that, that worries them you know, uh, greatly. And they speak about it on a, on a daily basis. This is something they're following very closely. So definitely something to monitor. And I'd be very concerned living in Germany right now. So you have family in Germany. Are, is any of them talking about like getting into precious metals or because of inflation and the, the CPI there? Germans always think about being in precious metals. <laughs> Actually, I learned a couple of years ago that per capita, Germans are the number one gold buyers in the world. And that's oh, really, that, yeah, that, yeah, above uh, head of China and India. Often people talk about China and India as the big gold buying countries, which is true, but on a per capita basis, it's Germans. 
And that is uh, the result of World War One and World War Two. They learned their lesson when it comes yeah. to hyperinflation and inflation, <laughs> uh, and obviously the the cost of war and what it, it did to their economies and to their families. So after real estate, gold is basically the most popular investment in Germany. Uh, they really do believe in the fundamental values that it brings to the portfolio, the wealth insurance factor that we talk about sometimes. So yeah, to answer your question, they think about it. <laughs> awesome. Well, Mark, we truly, we greatly appreciate you coming down to talk to Wall Street Silver about the prices and hopefully it goes a little bit higher. <laughs> All of us on Wall Street Silver are waiting for that moment, but uh, tr truly grateful for you coming down to talk to us. Thanks, Ivan. Always a pleasure. And uh, I am also hopeful that the prices climb a little <laughs> bit higher. <laughs> awesome. Take care. Take care.